Welcome to the Songwriters Across Texas podcast. This state has a lot to offer, and music is one of its greatest exports. On this podcast, we get to know songwriters through their stories and hear some of their music. Today, we're at Arwen Studios, and my guest is John Swat Swat. I'm Carl Anderson, and this is the Songwriters Across Texas podcast. He was born in Houston, but quickly moved to Katy, Texas, the football capital of the world. While football was fine with him, John Swat Swatner joined the choir at nine years old, and he found he had a stronger gift there. His father told him music is a gift from God, playing is your gift back. He began playing in high school, but had a hard time connecting to the gift. Having joined the military, he was deployed and stationed in Iraq, where he saw enough to come back with some PTSD. But it was also there that someone handed him a guitar, and this time he approached it in great earnest. It was therapeutic. John moved to Nashville for 10 years and started a music publishing company there with a friend. Nashville has its ways, and John was missing the Texas sound, so he came on back. He's written over 1,200 songs, many covered by other artists. But his last four singles are all presented by him, and all have charted hitting number 34 on the charts with his song, Drive. Please welcome to the show, John Swat Swatner. Hey, John. Hey, man, what's going on? Oh, you know. Thank you so much for being here. You came all the way from Houston. Appreciate you. Anytime, anytime. Uh, Can you kick us off with something right up top? Oh, put me on the spot. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll kick you off with my last single, Drive. Let's do it. What'd you say? Here we go. I like it. Right. 
old man clap. <laughs> Thanks, sir. John, that's gorgeous, man. Appreciate that's, it. That's your recent single, right? Yes, sir, it is. It's, this is such an interesting story to me. That song, I, I can see why it's charting. It's a very tasty, hooky, just that song moves. You And that's a driving song. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Well, that's what we were going for when I sat down and wrote with a few friends of mine, so... Oh, yeah? yeah. Do, do you write with other people a lot? Uh, I do. Uh, you know, I kind of started off in Nashville. That's where I kind of right. started off my writing career, of course, and uh, just kind of expanded it, of course, down here. And, wow, there's just so much talent. You, I can't even handle it, especially down here in Texas, of course. Right. There, I mean, there's so much in both places. Yeah. Obviously, you know, Nashville has its ways, uh, which are... They work, mm -hmm, absolutely. you know, and, he, and, he, and a lot of people can fit into that, but not every, you know, just like probably the same, like if the Nashville guy came here, they'd probably be like, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Maybe, you know, who knows? It's a little bit like that. Uh, they're, they're two different worlds, but, yeah. uh, you know, there's a lot of talent, like you said, uh, in both worlds. And I've just been so grateful and gifted to, um, Worked on both sides of it. Yeah, so, yeah. they over they do overlap. I Absolutely. know a lot of people have gone in, in between those two worlds. Um, Want to talk about? Uh, you just let's go to your beginnings because you were <laughs> Katy, Texas, the football capital of the world, right? Yes, sir, always and forever. <laughs> That's right. And you're like, cool, football's all right, but I can sing. You know, uh, all my buddies played football, and but the funny part about it was half of them were in the choir. Uh -huh. So I was like, wait a minute. Well, if the football players are joining the choir, there must be something cool about it. And right. I've always had a love of music, so right. I just kind of uh, steered that way. Nice. Uh, I was a choir kid, too. Like, I, would, I couldn't wait to be in the choir. And I, I got I started cutting my teeth, you know, like uh, in when I was nine in the church doing plays, you know. And I there really think that's what set me on my path. And uh, did you have anything like that when you, you were uh, – you, when you were nine, your father told you that, right? The gift when, I, got. when I was kind of young, uh, it was probably around that time, you know, I was just trying to figure out what who was a great example to follow. And my old man just looked at me and said, if you want to learn to be a great entertainer, a great writer, you know, artist, all that, right. you just need to pay attention to Michael Jackson. That's it. I, I had written that down because I was like, I wanted to hear that Michael Jackson thing. That's it. And, you know, of course, the next thing I know, uh, I'm trying to study all of his moves. I can't do any of them, especially the kick, of course. But, <laughs> the moonwalk. I mean, what what an example to, you know, of an set forward. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you took it seriously. I, I did. Uh, you know, I'm nowhere near on his level, of course. Nobody but, is. you know, like we were saying, you know, I kind of feel like, Music especially is kind of a gift from God, and yeah. what you do with it is kind of your gift to Him. So That's a, such a beautiful way of putting that. And when you said that to me, and you, you, then you gave your dad the credit for saying it, yeah. but, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm going to give you the credit when I tell that to people. <laughs> I'll gladly take it, so. <laughs> yeah, and I, it's his dad, too. I, shout out to the dad. High school, you're getting along. You're still doing your thing. Uh you're trying to play guitar, but you're not really able to kind of get in there the way you know you should. You don't haven't developed maybe any discipline. There wasn't any discipline. Uh, it was one of those things I had to teach it to myself later on, and uh, I kind of kicked myself for it because mm. I wish I would have had that discipline when I was younger and that kind of that drive and passion I found when I got a little older. So. Right. I think you, it, it kicks in when it's supposed to, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think all the experiences blend themselves to the next. So you have the realization, but you get you joined the military. Yes, sir. So when, you got out of, when you got out of school, you thought, was, was it something you knew you were going to do? Uh, no, actually. It was kind of, a, I wouldn't say a spur of the moment thing, but it was right uh, after 9-11, you know, there was a lot of things going yeah. on. And, you know, I wanted to pursue my degree in college, but I just kind of felt that pull, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, I went ahead and signed up with the uh, United States Army. There it is. Yes, sir. Uh, where were you stationed? I was down at Fort Stewart, Georgia, 3rd ID. 3rd ID. Yeah, okay. uh, and I was in 141 Field Artillery, so... Okay. Yeah. Now, I was an artillery guy. I was the supply guy, but I was everybody's friend because I could always get them the supplies they needed. So. Oh, that's a neat job. Yeah. It, well, I got to work with the artillery guys, and they let me uh, pop off a few rounds every, okay. now, every now and then. So. But you were in, so, yeah, that was probably nice to not have to be in charge of handling weapons. 
uh, yourself well, and point I, I was, them at people. I was also the armor as well. I kind of had multiple jobs, oh. so yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, that, I, I handled a couple of weapons in my time. Uh, okay, okay, I got that wrong. I didn't, I didn't mean to uh, speak for oh, you. Oh no, on no, no, that. no. You're good. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's you know, especially when you get in the military, even though they kind of assign you one job, right. It's not just know. one job. You've got to be very, very versatile. So I guess that makes a lot of sense. I never came close to joining the military, so yeah. I never, you know. But I, I do know an awful lot of people who have, and I, yeah. and I'm grateful, you know, for them all that they're willing to do that. Yeah, and I'm glad I didn't have to do it. Well, I, we appreciate that, and uh, like I said, there's a lot of guys and guys and gals yeah. out there that have served their country and uh you know we're thankful to all of them and you know yeah and i'm, I'm thank you and you but so you're over there and it's you see enough that it's like you know you know you're gonna come home with some some shiz and yeah. uh <laughs> it, uh it messes with your mind a little bit especially you know if you go through some traumatic experiences but Thankfully, I had music to turn to, so... That's the cool part, and uh, we had another guy on our show named Jace who's in this group, Madam Radar, and he had a, a very similar experience in Iraq, and he he was it was there, and he had not really learned... The, he, he had kind of fiddled with it a little beforehand, and but he was there, and he got... A, somebody put a guitar in his hands, mm -hmm. and he... Whoa, okay, yeah. now I'm going to play this thing, and so... Tell me about how that worked with you. You know, it, it does kind of spur something. And, you know, I've always believed that kind of music is the universal glue that kind of, you know, no matter where you're from, no matter what you do, you know, everybody can relate to music. Yeah. And while I was over there, uh, I replaced uh, some of the guys over there. And uh, one of the guys I replaced, I remember he handed me this really cheap guitar. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to give away what department store he may or may not have bought it at, but it was a pretty <laughs> discounted price. Uh, anyway, I ended up buying it off him for 20 bucks. The strings were rusted out. You know, you can imagine all that dry right, air. Right. But I uh, kind of retaught myself, and I had the pleasure of kind of playing a few songs for my buddies, especially, you know, yeah. a lot of the songs that they wanted me to learn. <laughs> oh, so, right, right. Yeah. So now you're, yeah, it's just another way to give give to the troops. Yeah. So uh, more incentive. Yeah. Um, so when you, you're finished with that, uh, fortunately, <laughs> and you yeah. come home, and uh, how did it go from there? Did you go right to Nashville? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I remember um, there was a specific event. Um, I've had a few friends of mine pass away while I'll, we were overseas. And, mm -hmm. and one of them I performed the national anthem at his memorial service while we were over in Iraq. And I remember afterwards... All my buddies walked up and they're like, what the hell are you still doing here, man? You need to pursue this music thing. You've right. got a gift. And I'm thinking, okay, well, if they're saying it, I better do it. Yeah. So, but it was pretty soon after I got out that I moved to Nashville and kind of started chasing the dream. So, Who is the friend up in Nashville that you started the publishing company with? His name is Johnny Garcia. Johnny uh, Garcia. He is one of the greats. Uh you know, obviously, if you're playing for Trisha Yearwood and Garth Brooks, you're their lead guitar player. You must be doing something right. So, but he's just, Dang. yeah, just, just a little thing on his resume. No big deal. Wow. Uh, along with, uh, you know, being his own publisher, songwriter, right. producer, you know, just a man of many talents. But how did you fall in with him? Uh, you know, uh, I was at the studio recording a song, and he was in the next studio over with uh, this guy named Johnny Highland. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of him. Uh, I don't. Pretty. I that name sounds familiar, but pretty it could good just, guitar player. Uh -huh. Yeah, and he's played on a lot of big records, and of course Johnny has. But right. Anyway, uh, one of my friends ran over, and he's like, "You'll never get to guess who's in the next studio. It's Johnny Garcia." And I said, "Who's Johnny Garcia?" Uh -huh. And of course, I didn't do my homework. Right. Well, within a week or so, I'd finally met him. I met him that day, of course. Mm -hmm. And within a week or so, I'd met him and played him some of my songs. And he just thought there was something there. So we kind of started working together, and we've been friends ever since. So. That's really cool, man, yeah. and that you, you ended up with somebody that had really reached these high levels, and but you knew just little enough 
in a way to, to to probably not be psyched out to be around him. You yeah. were comfortable to go up to him and oh, he's he's such a laid back guy. You know, I mean, the very first time I think we hung out, he invited me over to a barbecue with nice. his you know with his wife and you know kids and his neighbors, and we were drinking you know Dos Equis and God knows whatever else. Sounds like how they do it here. How yeah. does the barbecue compare? How does it compare? Well, Johnny's a Texas boy, okay. so I mean, he's got that you know that Texas touch when he does it up there, and obviously. Uh, his, you know, Hispanic background, you know, he right. adds that flavor as well. And yeah. his his wife, Laura, God bless her, she makes the best beans and rice I've ever tasted. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, good beans and rice is a is a great commodity. Because oh, yeah. it, and it's it, her and it's her grandmama's, of course, recipe, which is no recipe. It's a handful of this, a pinch of this, yes. you throw this in there. So That's the best. Ph- phenomenal, yeah. That's the best. Are you into cooking? Uh, I myself am really not into cooking, which is kind of funny because... Johnny's really into cooking. Of course, Trish is into cooking. Right. Uh, my nephew's into cooking. The rest of my family's into cooking. Uh, I'm into the eating part more than the cooking. So I'm with you. Although I do like to cook too. Nice. I, I, I go either way. Feed me or I'll feed you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm coming over for dinner then. <laughs> okay. Let's get it going. Um, so you're in, you were in Nashville for a long time, like yeah. ten years, right? About and, ten and, years. And we, how did the company come about? How did with 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 John? Well, uh, with Johnny, he had already had another publishing company of his own, but uh, he kind of wanted to take on some more writers, and so we kind of got together and got some investors and put some great writers together, and everything was just kind of going along swimmingly, uh, and then. Johnny got the call from Garth and Tricia that they wanted to go back out on oh. the road and. There's no way we could compete with Trish and Garth, right, so right. you kind of had to uh, change gears there. But you know, everything kind of worked out in the end. Right, but the company's still there, and yeah. you're, you're just kind of holding it, and you, but Absolutely. you're not pushing it forward. It's it, is yeah. it still there? We st- we still have the company. Uh, we've got a lot of great songs, great catalog. Great. I mean, Johnny himself said, you know, he would put it up against any catalog in Nashville. So wow. we had a lot of just great writers, great songs. Uh, a lot of them haven't had the chance to see the light of day, so we're just trying to bring them, you know, to light now. I love it, and that's what we're doing here, you know. I mean, it, that's the exact reason to do this is because I I got here in Austin in 95. I came from New York City, and I came here with my – who's now my ex-wife, but who she, I just got married to her, Casey Crowley, and she's a musician. She ended up on Atlantic Records in mm-hmm. the late 90s and, you know, had a good run. Uh but so I've been, you know, I've seen and I've been here and I've known all the musicians and so I was like, and I'm an artist, you know, so I'm like, I, I really want to, from day one, I was like, I want to show the world what I'm looking at here. Like this scene, these talent pool, these clubs you can go watch people at with and not, and have room, yeah. you know, like it's really quite fantastic. It's amazing, especially around here. You can just run into so much talent, um, and young talent as well, yeah. up and coming. Uh, it's a lot. Going you know, on right it's now it's department. really great. But you're more than just an artist. I mean, you've got a little bit of an acting background as well. You're well you're well rounded. So yeah, I do. I sure do. I like that part. I think that helps being able to sit here and just do, do that. Because in the Absolutely. end, like if, if I'd start working a bit, you know, like let's do a thing, man. <laughs> um, I think we're ready for song two. Actually, cool. Uh, what are you gonna? You are you gonna go into your arsenal again for your hit, your current hit? I think. Well, I, I think I I'm know. gonna go ahead. Uh, I'll You're play. Cool. I'll play one of my uh, recent hits. Uh, this one was definitely a top forty. Uh, you know, I always kind of tell a little story behind this one. Uh, I was drunk once. <laughs> no, once. Um, according to Mama, uh, Mrs. Swatner. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, that being said, uh, wrote a song with a couple of friends of mine about some of the regrets you may or may not have after having a few too many. So this was my uh, last single out there. This is called Drunk Me. Get away. I was on cloud nine Cause you hadn't crossed my mind Now 
White sandy beach with the tiki bar Friends in low places on a Spanish guitar That salt water breeze, no trace of your memory I was feeling no pain After one margarita I was out on the floor With the pretty senorita Buzzing on tequila Didn't think I'd need you no more But those straight shots of Cuervo Went straight to my heart Once I get to drinking Can't turn off the thinking It's killing me just being apart Whenever I tie on a few Drunk me Can't get over you Two sheets to the wind Working on three I'm thinking about you while she's hanging on me Then they play that somebody did somebody wrong song After one margarita I was out on the floor With the pretty senorita buzzing on tequila Didn't think I need you no more But those straight shots of Cuervo went straight to my heart Once I get to drinking Can't turn off the thinking It's killing me just being apart Whenever I tie on a few Drunk me Can't get over you I know I shouldn't have called you up But you know how I get when I drink too much Yeah, it's one margarita and I'm out on the floor With the pretty senorita buzzing on tequila Didn't think I need you no more But those straight shots of Cuervo went straight to my heart Once I get to drinking, can't turn off the thinking It's killing me just being apart Whenever I tie on a few Drunk me can't get over you Yeah, whenever I tie on a few Drunk me can't get over like that. <laughs> yes. Thank you, sir. Yes. We've all been there once or twice, I'm sure. Uh, last night? No. <laughs> no, it wasn't last night, I'm sure. Uh, man, again, a home run. Thanks. Man. Two home runs in a row. Thanks, You man. are really good at writing. How do you approach it? Uh, the, you come up with the hook or the lyrics? or it, it, You it know, it really just depends sometimes who you're in the uh, room with. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Good friend of mine, Bridget Tatum, she comes in there and just starts spitting out words, and you just got to keep up and go, okay, hold on, I haven't even caught up yet. Whereas, you know, other friends of mine, like Johnny, you know, we kind of just sit there and mellow for a minute, and then one of us will come up with something and then just roll with it, so. Right, so you're you're writing always with others. Yes. That's cool. We'll have to, hey, Richie, remi Richie remind me uh, that we're going to have to get them who the co-writes are for our thing, if you don't mind. <laughs> I just took a time to talk to Richie. Richie. Weave this in. Richie's doing this part in. He's doing a great job. I can already tell. He's getting my bad side, so we're good. <laughs> Richie's crushing it all the time. Holly's crushing it all the time. Todd's crushing it all the time. Ben's crushing it all the time. And Cleveland's crushing it all the time. I keep catching myself staring at Holly's feet for some reason when I'm singing. <laughs> <laughs> She's got those shoes on. That's, That's it keeps me distracted. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> Um, so you've been writing and writing and writing and, and with others and you've got this arsenal and you, but you, you are not delivering your own songs the whole time. 
You know, I never really considered myself an artist uh, for a long time. I know that sounds kind of weird. Um, you know, there's just, like I said, so much talent out there, and I'm thinking, well, I mean, I know between me and other people, you know, they might sing certain songs, you know, and there's certain songs in my arsenal that I've written that I they're just not made for me. Right. I got um, you. I got you. But that being said, you know, once I kind of moved down here, I realized that especially the Texas music singing, they're so open and so just accepting and yeah. they don't really uh, care what your hair looks like or uh, right. how big your smile is or uh, how if many... you're smiling at all. How many extra pounds you might have packed on over right. the holidays. Oh, big uh, time. You know, everybody down here is just really accepting, especially if you have, like we were saying, a gift or talent. They, uh, they want to kind of accentuate that and share it. And That's... I love that, so, especially down here in Texas. Yeah, and you're in Houston, right? Right outside of Houston, yeah. So what is the what is the scene like there? Like I don't get down to Houston very often, and uh, and so I couldn't tell you what the scene. How does it feel? Like how, especially maybe coming out of COVID. Uh, you know, uh, I think that just like a lot of the big cities, we're recovering well. I will say, uh, if you're planning on heading in town, go ahead and buy you an Astros jersey, uh, especially in the Houston area. They'll be automatically accepted. <laughs> there, that uh, would help you blend right in. <laughs> No, you know, I think the city's doing well. I kind of live a little outside of town, kind of a little bit more in the rural area. So, Uh you know, we didn't get hit nearly as bad uh, as some of the areas. But, you know, it's really been uplifting to see a lot of people come together, um, working together. And especially for all the musicians, you know, it's been just as tough on them. You know, out there not being able to go perform as much, not being able to get in the room with, you know, your friends to write or... Even, you know, record a, uh, an album, it's just been a lot more difficult. So everybody's had to make the adjustments, but yeah. we're, we're, we've learned to live with it. So Everything's kind of opened back up, of course, right? Yeah. So are the, where, are the, where are the good gigs down there? Man, Lucky they're, Duck. The Lucky Duck's a good Mucky. one. Uh, Mucky, you know, Mucky. there's so many of them. That are, you know, of course, House of Blues down there. Yes, and, yes, yes, yes. You know, there's, I, I can't even name them all. You know, it's it's growing. It's kind of growing. It's nowhere near on Austin's level yet, but Houston is growing, especially in the music scene. So it's, that's cool to it's hear. Exciting. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. And, and the rebound. Did you do a, a lot of people streamed stuff during COVID? Did you have anything like that that you were doing? I did a little bit of that. Um, and you know, it's like again, it's kind of the only way we could reach out to a lot of our friends and fans yeah. and still be able to share our music. Uh, yeah. So COVID kind of you know threw the whole world into a whirlwind, but. You know, we've all kind of come through it. I think better people um, you. and, you know, more connected in different ways. But It was the weirdest thing. Like, he, he, the whole world got put in a timeout. Yeah. And it was like, I want you to think about what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, my only, that was my only issue. I had too much time sitting at home thinking about all the bad things. So I needed to get back busy with the music. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, no, I mean, you had too much time to think. Can, yeah. You'd get some stinking thinking, I guess, right? <laughs> that what they say. Um, so I want to, because now your success for these last four singles, which, and I, we've heard two of them now, and I, they're both smoking. I'm guessing the other two are equal, and you got a fifth one coming out. And it's, but this is now all your face, mm-hmm. your brand, mm-hmm. and that's pretty fresh yeah. for you, right? Yeah, I've only been um, out here kind of releasing songs for little less than two years now. Mm-hmm. And again, like I said, the people have just been very accepting. Radio has been really accepting. Uh, and, you know, the other artists, I mean, they're very supportive. Uh, everybody that I've met, you know, they they just, we all want to succeed and they yeah. want to see people that they believe in succeed and then vice versa. So Exactly. So are you performing? I am. Uh, we've got a gig coming up uh, in Conroe, October 8th. Conroe. And then before that, actually, uh, we've got a gig coming up in Brenham on September 25th. So... I'm going to have all my uh, peeps in the backyard right down the street from me. They'll all be there to support. Is it a band that uh, you are maintaining or you just put UK? Yeah, well, it was a band that was already kind of pre-existing before I moved here. Okay. And I kind of hooked up with them. They're named Cypress Rose. They've been together for a lot of years. But uh, the uh, kind of the band leader heard a lot of my music and thought we would kind of blend really well together. So we've been working together for about two years now. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Will Sexton had a record that his last record he put out was uh, he had a backing band that he fell in with. He's he's out of Memphis now. Uh, Mm -hmm. He was Austin now. He's in Memphis, but, Mm -hmm. you know, he's still Austin. Um, But that's what he did. And I was like, I... 
you don't hear stuff like that very yeah. often. And I thought, brilliant, they sound so good with you, you know. So I'm guessing you must have a similar thing. When you have that, like you said, when you've got that vibe and connection already and uh, certain people kind of already believe in your music, it's just, it makes it a lot easier. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, and the songs are good. Do you feel being a front man, is, what does that come with? Do you like it? You know, the way I've always looked at it, Carl, is um, a lot of people, like I said, they consider themselves artists, and I'm a lot of them deserve the title. I don't ever consider myself an artist myself. I just like to consider myself an entertainer. I got you. So I guess what that means is when I get on stage, you know, I know I'm not the best thing to look at, but I'm going to put on a hell of a show for you and keep you entertained the entire time I'm up there. So That's <laughs> at, least do my, or at least do my best to do that. There you go. Do you get dicked out or are you just, just dress in jeans and a shirt? Or I just, you know, kind of, it depends. Most of the time it's kind of the get up I'm wearing right now, mm -hmm. but, uh, well, especially during the summertime when it's, you know, scorching out there, you got to maintain. When is this? 100, the, oh, 100, 100, 100, 110, yeah. 112, 105. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Well, it's four a little, months in a row. It's a little hard for me to jump around in shorts and flip flops. But, it's not uh, a good look, dude. You can't, <laughs> not I mean, for me, man. I used to literally, no matter how it got, I would like, I will not be caught out in public in a pair of shorts because it's just, I, I just, and I, I don't have that anymore. Ben, who directs the show, wears shorts all the time. I've seen him wearing shorts in the funniest places, and it works. <laughs> yeah. But I just, I felt like I was like, men don't look as good in shorts, man. I think, you know, and and I'm that's just me. It, everybody's a little different. I know I don't look any good in shorts, so <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pass on that I one. just feel like you look like you're going to the gym or the beach, and that's fine <laughs> if you're going to the gym or the beach, but, you know, walking around. Going to the supermarket. Nah, I'm, I might be going. Pants. I might be going to the bar by the beach, but that's as close as I'm. There you, <laughs> that would that would be a time to wear shorts right. at the bar at the beach. I just I want to thank you for coming, and I'm so glad. It's so fun to get to know somebody on with a camera on you, and you're talking about real things. Exactly. You know, and it's and I'm really really do appreciate you coming. I'm very impressed with you, well, and I look forward to see where it's gonna go. You know, uh, Carl, we appreciate you as well um, for everything y'all are doing here, Thank especially you. for the songwriters. You know, it's it's nice to have people that are supportive and want to help us get our names out there and our music and just share great music with everybody. That's, I think that's part of what you're doing here and the biggest part of what you're doing here. And I, yeah. I really admire that. So thank you all so much for having me. Thank you so much. Uh, can you close us out with another one? Well, what kind of song do you want? I, was, I wasn't prepared. I have I, a, plenty of them. Do you want I, something upbeat and fun? Do you want something a little more... You, man, I upbeat and fun's always a, all right, a winner. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This song I'm kind of put me on the spot, but this is usually my closer. And that being said, um, I wrote this with a few friends of mine. Um, this song is called Boat Rocking. All right. And usually, if my nephew is here, he'd be singing along. It's usually a sing along song. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it to you guys right now, so y'all kick on back, relax, and enjoy. <laughs> sun comes up, we got them coolers ice down, we get that truck backed up, we get that thing hitched up, we gotta roll, find us some H2, oh, oh. you start calling your girls, they start calling their girls, they got them Ray-Bans working those tens, oh no. Make them wanna shake some things off. Take it to the chorus, yeah. Are we doing that boat rocking? Are we doing that body shotting? Drip dropping, be bumping, yeah, we ain't stopping. Just tell them that the party's on, yeah, they can pass it on. Cause we doing that boat, are we doing that boat rocking? Rock, 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 rock. We making it rock, 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 rock. You know when the sun goes low, still on that solo flow, moon hanging like a disco ball. I swear you can't go wrong if you take another sip. Make you on a skinny dip. Take it 
to the chorus, yeah. We do an apple rocking, we do an that body shotting, drip dropping, beat bumping, yeah. We ain't stopping, just tell them that the party's on, yeah. They can pass it on. We do an boat, are we do an apple rocking, rock, 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 rock. Waves, we making them ripples. What are we making this way up just a little? Yup, are we making them waves? We making them ripples. What we making this way? We making it t -t -t jiggle. Are we doing that bump rocking? We doing that body shot and drip dropping, be bumping. Yeah, we ain't stopping. Just tell them that the party's on. Yeah, they can pass it on. Be doing that bump. Are we doing that bump rock and rock, 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 rock? Are we making it rock, 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 rock? Everybody rock, 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 rock. Are we about to rock, 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 rock? Hey! Woo! Yes, sir! What? Three home runs. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's how we do it. <laughs> that was a party right there. John Swat Swatner. Hey, thank you, gosh, so much for coming. What a joy and what a treat. Same here, Carl. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. What's your... Uh What's your email address so the kids can find your uh, website? It's uh, not your email address. Your website. yeah, website, Dev. I knew what you meant. Uh, it's johnswatband.com. John Swat, J O H N S W A T B A N D dot com. You got it. Go there and check out some more of his fine stuff. Uh, please also click the like and subscribe button. Uh, and if you've been listening to this podcast and not watching it, we have a YouTube channel, Songwriters Across Texas. Go watch it. And uh, there's more stuff there, too. Thanks again, John. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. Appreciate it. <laughs>